innovation, resilience, agility. It's how Michigan businesses work together and continue to build the future. Our expertise, talented workforce, and collaborative environment are making a difference now and shaping the future. Join us and make your mark where it matters. Visit michiganbusiness.org slash radio to put your plans in motion. That's michiganbusiness.org slash radio. Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at bjgeeknation.com. Your wages are being garnished. We can stop that now. It's hard enough to pay your bills when things are good, let alone when a big chunk of your take-home pay is gone before you even get your check. I'm bankruptcy attorney Travis Gagné, and I can stop the garnishment and get the creditors off your back immediately, often the same day as our consultation. Both Chapter 7 and 13 provide bankruptcy relief, but choosing the right chapter is crucial. In a free consultation, we can create a plan to get your finances back under your control. The chapter you choose sets the tone for the next chapter of your life. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. On Saturday, October 27th, the Bourbon and Bacon Fest is heading to Tea Town, baby. Oh, yeah. Let's go. All right, you can, man. Because you know what? We got distilleries from all over the country bring in their finest spirits. And there are two sessions, day session, night session. Join us during each one. Or, you know what, pick one. I don't think you do both. Tacoma Armory is where we're going to be. And again, uh, distilleries, they'll be there with their bourbon and great restaurants bring in their bacon. Yes, bourbon and bacon fest. You want to go to KISW.com? Well, that's where you get your tickets. Bourbon and Bacon Fest, benefiting our friends at Treehouse. Let's play B Mix. It's time to play the game. So everybody scream his name. B Mix, don't be a loser. Whoa, B Mix, you're a loser. It is time to be. Or we can whack him. It's Whack It Wednesday. Whack it. Oh, yeah. That good old hump day. Whack it. Oh, you got to love the hump. Let me see everybody do their Mr. Wacky then. All right. Woo! I hope there's people out there that are wooing along uh, in the radio while they're driving. (laughs) It's just one. Yeah. (laughs) Let's get to our contestant today. We got Josh in Tacoma to take on Steve. Josh, are you there? Good morning. Good morning. What's he playing for today, Steve? Playing for tickets to check out Enduro Cross over at the Angel of the Winds Arena on October 27th. Go to KISW.com for all the details. And if you want to go to Enduro Cross, get your tickets at AngelOfTheWindsArena.com. All right, Steve, get out of here. Get out. For those playing at home, Josh will have 60 seconds to answer 10 questions. Josh, you can pass all you want, but you will only get three guesses per question. Are you ready? Oh, yeah. Nice. What fashion item can be styled in a half Windsor or Hanover? Hi. Yes. Typically, the Home Depot logo is white and what other color? Orange. Yes. What is the proper term for a young whale? Cat? Yes. On a standard computer keyboard, what letter is to the right of the letter K? L? Yes. What was the name of the horse belonging to the Lone Ranger? Silver. Yes. Who played Ash Williams in the in Army of Darkness? Pass. Which Bond actor passed away in 2017? Roger Moore. Yes. What city was the setting for the TV show Perfect Strangers? Uh, Cincinnati. No. Chicago. Yes. Sandy Cheeks is a fictional character from what animated show? Pass. How many U.S. presidents were assassinated in office? One. No. One, two, three, four, five, six, two. seven. Correct. No. A little more than that, but yeah. we'll have to see if that will be the deciding factor there. Might be. Seven is a really good answer. A uh, good uh, number there. It's a good answers. answer, too. A good number of answers. Yeah, you know what you're doing. Almost. Yeah. Whack it. Steve? Are you ready to try some whacking? Oh, yeah. Somebody texted in saying they do the woo thing. Nice. And another person says, can I get a shout out for my buddy JJ? He broke his femur last night in a dirt bike accident. He goes into surgery later this afternoon. Ooh, good luck with that. Ouch. Yeah. Give it a shout. 
I hope no one should break a leg when he was doing his dirt bike thing and then it actually happened. How bad would you feel? Oh, really, feel bad, really bad, actually. Right? I would feel terrible. <laughs> Are you ready? Oh, yeah! What fashion item can be styled in a half Windsor or Hanover? Oh, uh, tie. Yes. Typically, the Home Depot logo logo is white and what other color? Loco. <laughs> Loco. Uh, orange. Yes. What is the proper term for a young whale? A sperm? No. That's uh, it. A little thingy? No. A uh, little thingy. Tadpole. No. Uh, On a standard computer keyboard, what letter is to the right of the letter K? L. Yes. Oh. What was the name of the horse belonging to the Lone Ranger? Tonto. No. Oh, um, Silver. Yes. Hi ho. Who played Ash Williams in Army of Darkness? Bruce Campbell. Yes. Ooh, yeah. Which Bond actor passed away in 2017? Oh. Roger Moore. Yes. What city was the setting for the TV show Perfect Strangers? Chicago. Yes. Sandy Cheeks is a fictional character from what animated show? What? Sandy Cheeks? Yeah. Uh, Debbie Dubs Dallas. No. Uh, Bug Rats. No. <laughs> Uh, Ricky Morty. No! One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's a tie! Oh. Josh, Steve, you whack each other. Yeah. That means Josh wins whack the prize. Whack it. Good job, Joshy. All right, well, you, you hang on the line there, man of many words. Um, yeah. Nothing much to say but the answers. Yeah. Got those ones correct. And uh, he actually knew that the proper term for a young whale is a calf. Oh, I thought that would be the difference. Damn yeah. it. I did, too. It ended up just being the tie. Uh, Sandy Cheeks is uh, from what animated show? Oh, Danny and Vicky know this. The greatest show ever, SpongeBob SquarePants. Hell yeah. Greatest ever. Yeah. That's a little. Mm, that's greatest a TV mistake. show of all time. It is well, not the greatest TV yeah, show no, of all time. it really time. is. I wait until we talk about something else and you'll say it's the greatest TV show of all time. <laughs> that's probably true. But <laughs> Okay. Uh, one question you did not get to that Josh got incorrect. How many U.S. presidents were assassinated in office? Two? No. Three? No. Four? Yeah! I only know two of them. Who else was assassinated? I don't know. I I didn't look that up. What? I mean, you have Google right in front of you. You can look it up. Google it, bitch. You you didn't think we'd ask that question? I mean, I know about Lincoln. I know about Kennedy. Yeah. Uh, Those are the two famous ones that that I definitely know about. I don't know anybody else. Yeah, there's... A couple of the other ones. Yeah, you don't know them either. No. And you didn't think they actually get that. Jeez, That's thanks. a lot of extra work Hamilton. on that. Well, Vicky's working on it I don't right think now. Hamilton was a president. Was he a president? I don't know. It's yeah. Um, things out there. It's just coming up with words. There's, so many, people, there's so many There's so many people sure face palming right now. Why would they do a whole play about him if he wasn't a president? Uh, they did a whole play about uh, Bob Legally Blonde. She never was president. <laughs> They did a whole play well, about cats, and they're not even human. They did a whole thing about Greece, and unless I checked, uh, she wasn't present. Your Honor, we withdraw the question. <laughs> we can't beat that kind of better call Saul logic. <laughs> Congratulations. I don't think the Lion King was president. Yeah. <laughs> Vicky, still no answer? Garfield and McKinley. Yeah, Thank there you. we go. Garfield and McKinley. I come on. I kept getting the list of all the presidents that died during office. Yeah, there's a lot of them. reasons. Yeah. How is it that, you know what, Danny, give her some skills. Show her how you do the work the internet because Vicky. I, uh, I, got, I got a little distracted because assassination has the word ass in it twice. <laughs> well, I mean, she's not wrong. That's Whack it. with. Ass, okay. ass. Assassination. 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 Okay. I learned Actually, how to spell it. That's how I learned how to spell it as well. Okay. <laughs> so it says it's James Garfield and William McKinley. Oh, thank you very much, Texters. Lincoln, Kennedy, Garfield, McKinley. I didn't know about Garfield and McKinley. Didn't know those guys were often off. It was a good law firm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, congratulations to Josh on tying Steve this morning, winning the prize. Yeah, that's all you got to do is tie or beat Steve. That's how you win the prize, just like that on Beat Migs. Got a new TV show that I know Vicky's going to love. Uh oh. But it's in France. So uh, is you it gonna... SpongeBob SquarePants, the in greatest French? show ever? Yes. No, this might even be better than that. New TV show based in France where singles meet to have sex first, then decide if they're meant to be. So actually, they just pair you up and you know going in, the first thing you're going to do is have sex. So that just sounds like my dating life altogether. That's a fact. So, so are they calling this The Bachelor? I mean, isn't that what they're doing on that show pretty much? This is, but this is, there's no auspices at all. Like gotcha. The Bachelor pretends like, oh, we're looking for romance and it always devolves into her, her or him having a lot of action. Uh, this is a, so, a show, and I love the name of it. Thank Banging time. No, that's not the name of it. No. Banging time. <laughs> that would be a great name. Uh, it's called Making Love because they're actually going to see if these people can make love out of this oh. making love situation. Oh, that is actually oh. pretty clever. Yeah. Way better than banging time. Yeah, it is. I give it to them. Producers call this a groundbreaking experiment into how humans fall in love. 
Now, you know, you and I never, you never like this when I talk about it, but biologically speaking, you know, men and women, usually if they're heterosexual, the first thing they're thinking of is, is sex, especially men and women, maybe if no, they're I thinking of baby time. I'm opposed to, biologically speaking, the whole, the first thing you think of is sex. It's the, the first thing I don't think of is I want to make a baby with this person. Make a, well, yeah, we well, see, you're, if we were the ones thinking about making babies, we would never have sex. Mm. That never occurs to us because the baby part of it is 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 like the well. And I don't think every woman is thinking, "I want to make a baby with this guy." Well, it's an, but it's interesting. Women do go into that uh, baby mode, though. I mean, Vicky kind of is into like, "Oh, they're so cute." I think they're cute, but I don't meet a guy and be like, "Oh my god, I want to make a baby with you." It's usually let me bang you and see if we're compatible. Yeah, but why? Well, right, we'll see. Well, this is what this show is all about. So you you are half the way there, Vicky, because you're going to meet the guy and you'll go right to bang, and that's what they're saying. The contestants actually meet in a bedroom and the cameras actually will capture pretty much the entire encounter so wait so they're just in bed somebody walks in and they just get it on yeah they don't even have a oh they could even up the ante if if the show gets stale they could have like a box of i'm I'm assuming condoms are being used in this situation i would think so you would think or if they have but maybe like some of the condoms have like you know a hole poked in them (laughs) oh jeez it's 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 almost like you're like playing wheel of fortune sometimes you get bankrupt yeah. Russian roulette. I don't know if we want that into the game. Yeah, that's Boy, more that's, than lose a turn right yeah, there. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> well, yeah. I'm just saying, after a while, people are going to want to add some things onto this game show. Oh, those French know how to make a TV show. Now, unfortunately, they don't show you all of it. The cameras will pull away at the last minute, they say, and return in the couples, as they call it, quote, post-coital glow or post-coital gloom. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I'll wonder, watch this. I'll be honest, dude. I wonder I, how much they're going to show, though. Are they going to? I mean, as far as like how much nudity and how much action are they going to show? They, they'll pull yeah. away at the last minute, they say. But I bet they'll have like the covers over them. Maybe you'll see a butt or two. Yeah, but yeah, I don't imagine they're going to make it into a porn. Well, I, you know the French though, maybe so. I don't. I don't know what their standards are. Please tell me that that part where they pull it out. They call it like the pull out mo- mo- moment, like you know, with the camera. They, they show like a funny like. Make some sex terms with it. Yeah, they probably should. I mean, they were it's clever. time for the pullout. Again, though, they're clever with the, the title. I'm not sure any of your sex terms are going to fly. No, that's fine. Yeah. And how about this? Once that happens, once they're done, they're going to go into separate bathrooms where they will debrief the audience about the lovemaking and whether or not their date is worth a second meeting. I'm taking a shower as soon as it's over? Is that what they're trying to tell And then us? you're talking to people. It's wow. like the, the shower will be the confessional, I guess. And the show will then follow the daters over the next few weeks to see if the pair remains friends with benefits only, or will they choose to get to know each other and start a relationship? Vicky, would you do a show like this? Yeah, I, I mean, it's what I already do. Next. I, I started a new thing, though, too, just for funsies, is when I'm going on a date with a guy, I will take care of business, if you will, so that way I don't go into it thinking, oh my God, this guy's so amazing, and I think it's good for guys to do that beforehand, too. Oh, like the something about Mary kind of method. Yeah. yeah, so basically you kind of walk into it without rose-colored glasses. Sure. I don't know. It's, 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 it worked for me. Yeah, the trouble is, though, is that I still find myself attracted. Even even if I may not have the desire to immediately jump the table, mm-hmm. still, there's still something there. Because I, 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 th- I thought that I used to try that method, too. And I go, you know, I still find that person attractive. Like, I want to bang them, even though I'm not, maybe I need to rest a little bit. <laughs> I might have to rest up. So I don't know if that would work for me. I don't know if that works for me. But I have heard people try to use that. So in this game, can you... It, do you have at least maybe like a wild card that you could throw out? Like, hey, I'm no, I'm not doing this guy or I'm not doing this girl. You know what I mean? That's a good question. How do you know that the minute that person walks into the bedroom that are you just you, you have no choice but you're going to have to have sex with them? Obviously, they can't do that. Right. What if it's your cousin or something you didn't know? I got to think it's a sort of yeah, uh, that'd a tin- be awkward. It's got to be a Tinder thing. You know, you at least have to see the person and go, all right, you know, and hopefully, you, you know, they do a background check to make sure uh, they're not your cousin. So, like, they'll, they'll, here's uh, six pictures of guys. Okay, of, of these six, which ones would you absolutely have sex with? And then... And then yeah, you same. know that's the show. Yeah. The show is you're going to go into a bedroom and have sex with somebody. Here are some people. Uh, who would you go into and have? I mean, because you know what the show is about. That's why I think we should. If Vicky's up to it, we should have her apply that. Senator to France, an American radio person. Oh yes, they would probably dig that. I speak no French, but I'm good. Yeah, you know, I'll figure it out. You speak, All you need to know is say wee oui, wee. Oui. Yeah. Oui, oui. And you know sure. about the wee oui, wee. Oui, so what yes. else do you need to know? Wee oui, wee oui for the wee oui, wee. Oui. You speak the language of love. And it's making love. So it's on French TV. If it's successful, I wonder if we'll find a way to bring it here to the States. Like, oh, 100%. There's got to be a, like an HBO or somebody that would put this on. 
Oh, one of those shows. Vice. Yeah. Some, some, I can see it on there. Yeah. Someone says that my husband and I, we had sex on our first date. We've been together for 21 years. Wow. I've said get it out of the way. That's what I love about this whole idea. Um, that's why, you know, taking care of business, I, I think, you know, taking care of business is a way for you to be chilled. But I still think you should get it out of the way. If you have any interest in somebody, make sure it's not just sexual. So Nothing more romantic than being like, hey, so you just want to get it out of the way? Yeah. That's what I'm all about. All right, we got to talk about this former teacher who shared a very incredible story about a student that she will never forget. And it's all because of how he once used a urinal. Yeah, you're going to hear this story at 717 on The Rock. BJ and Migs, mornings on The Rock, 99.9 KISW. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. This week on the Migs cast, the fellas had Glenn's parents on yes. the show. They're in town from Maryland, man. Yeah, I got to meet them yesterday, Roger and Yolanda. Very nice people. Big Raj and Yola. Yeah, and uh, Glenn's mom was a fourth grade teacher. So, of course, they had to talk to her about her, you know, with her about her time being a teacher for them damn kids. Do you have a memory of when you were teaching in fourth grade where you were just like, I, this kid is the worst? Not your oh, son, yeah. of course. What's your favorite memory of one of those? Oh, yes. I, I mean, I've had, some, I've had some interesting students. One in particular um, was very difficult, very difficult student. But anyway, you know him well, Roger. Uh, oh. <laughs> he spent time in jail. But um, it was towards the end of school. Did and you know at the time, you're like, this kid's going to end up in jail. He did. <laughs> But honestly, I must say, this child was so unusually behavior that I had the best behaved boy in the class escort this other boy to the bathroom when it was needed. So they were gone for quite some time, the two of them, and they came back to class. And they were giggling like crazy. And then the good, the good boy was giggling. And I went over and spoke to him. And I said, what, what's up? Well, this other boy, I don't want to use names, but this other boy had decided to be funny, and he pooped in the urinal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he did. I yeah. said, right. So I sent the young man up to clean up the mess. I'm 44, and I think that's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Doing the kid props and the, here. Of course, I had to tell my principal <laughs> what had happened. Anyway, the best three days of school that year was when he had to stay home. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. And of course, I, I, I mean, you, you I mean, all of you guys probably thought that was a great story. Well, yeah, I wasn't you know, expecting that. You all, you know? You're all loving that kid. Mm-hmm. Too bad he ended up in jail. I feel like, you know, that's, that's unfortunate because he had such creativity. I just love the other kid also found great humor in it. The, the well-behaved kid. She's like, look, I'm a well-behaved kid, but still pooping in the urinal. That's hilarious. Oh, yeah. You know, and you don't get in any trouble and you're watching a great show. Yeah. You're getting great entertainment watching this kid break all the rules, and you're like, wow, this this is awesome, and I'm not in trouble, but yeah. If you're the kid, and you catch wind somehow, that as it were. The, the, the teacher that that happened with still thinks of you as being that one kid that they'll always remember, that's got to feel pretty good. Yeah, you're epic. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt about it. And I'm sure she's not the only one that knows about the kid doing that. Mm-hmm. That had to spread in the school. I know that because I've never heard that in my school at days ever. If, if somebody did that, that would have been an epic thing in my day. Oh, he'd be like homecoming king. Yeah, definitely. How about that? The kid just yeah, took a dump ski in the old urinal and everybody dug that one. By the way, if you want to hear the full interview, you can hear the mix cast on com or on iTunes. It's one of the most popular podcasts that Steve does. It's the most popular mix cast of all mix casts. Yeah, I agree. I have to agree. Yeah. <laughs> It's the lukewarm topic of the day. So, Glenn Cannon from the Migscast, uh, his mom Yolanda shared a great story uh, on the Migscast about a student that she will never forget. Yeah, the old kid dumping in the urinal. How about you? We want we want to finish this sentence. I'll never forget that one kid that once did blank. Or when were you that kid that no one will ever forget? 206 421 Rock, text us at 77999. Finish this sentence. I'll never forget that one kid that once did blank. Or maybe you were that one kid. You call us your text after Rage Against the Machine on The Rock. BJ and Migs, mornings on The Rock, 99.9 KISW. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. Glenn Cannon's mom, Yolanda, shared a great story on the Migs Cast podcast about a student that she will never forget. And based on this, we wanted to finish this sentence. I will never forget that one kid that once did blank. Or 
maybe you were that kid that no one will ever forget. And Glenn's mom was a fourth grade teacher, and the kid went to the bathroom and came back, and they found out that he pooped in the urinal. Yeah. And so he says there was a whole South Park episode revolving around someone pooping in the urinal. And another text says, I'm a third grade teacher. Someone poops in the urinal at least once a week. Oh, man. So Time it's, to it's, change, man. Yeah, it used to be something that was really special. Now it's just a pedestrian. Yeah, Everybody we're being desensitized it. by this. Yeah. So how about you? 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. Let's go to Sherry and Everett. Sherry, you are on the rock. Hi. Hi, Sherry. So was it some? Was it a kid that you will never forget, or were you that kid? I was that kid. Oh, what did you and do? And I did acid at school. There's a shot. <laughs> Our buddy Sherry did acid at school. No, what, you, really? What grade? Yeah. I was in 10th um, grade. And a girl wow. that didn't like me that was like in love with my best friend saw us chewing up the sugar cubes. And she told on us. And then the cops came and I got stripped down in the principal's office. Man, Damn. that's definitely a buzz kill. That was. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> But so, that's my story. That's what I did at school that people will never forget me for. So, um, <laughs> acid Sherry, uh, how much trouble yeah. did you get in for that? Uh, I only got suspended for 10 days, but I was grounded for like two months. Did you ever do acid again after that? No, I didn't. Oh, really? I had already done it a few times before that, so that was kind of the end of it for, yeah. for me. <laughs> Damn, scared straight. Yeah. Look at Sherry. Wow. Yep. Wow. I can't believe that person dimed you out. Yep. That was pretty rotten because I got in a lot of trouble. And, and did she get your guy? Uh, yes. Oh, and she stole the guy, too. Oh. oh, get the guy. Oh, no. No, that was my best friend. No, she didn't. Oh, okay. All right, then. All right, then. For a minute there, I thought, all right, maybe, you know what, that would even be worse. It's like, you know, take your bang buddy away. That's not good. Damn. 206421 Rock, Texas at 77999. Let's go to Josh and Renton. Josh, you are on the Rock. Hey, how's it going, guys? Not too bad, Josh. Uh, how about you? Was it some kid that you'll never forget, or were you that kid? Uh, I was one of the kids. It was a group of uh, about four of us in middle school. Um, they, we were part of a, a group of kids that weren't allowed uh, to go on a field trip because we were either suspended or had detention or whatever. Oh, damn. Uh, so they, the class was, well, the whole grade, I think this was like 6th or 7th grade, um, the whole grade was going on this big Cedar Point uh, trip, and they had to get on the buses at like 4 o'clock in the morning uh, to go to this trip. And so they, they had all the buses lined up. It's still dark outside. They, uh, all the kids are lined up getting checked in, and the teachers got all their paperwork out, making sure everybody's got the signed paperwork from their parents. And uh, me and my buddies, who weren't allowed to go, we stayed up all night um, filling up water balloons and uh, putting, loading them into backpacks. Whoa. And out in the trees on the, on the side of the school uh, and came rushing out and wearing masks, just pelting everybody with water balloons at 4 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Jesus. That's uh, a lot of effort, man. That is a lot of effort. You guys were <laughs> bummed that you couldn't go ride the roller coasters. Well, it was, you know, I mean, we just, our little group of friends, we did stuff like that all the time. We were kind of like the uh, the skater punks, I guess, of the school. That's and, probably why uh, they were, that was why you guys were suspended in the first place, I guess. <laughs> That's pretty much it, yeah. Did but, you get in trouble for that then, too? Uh, we did, yeah. I think it was, uh, I mean, we were all wearing masks, but they knew who we were, obviously. Yeah, the four kids that uh, weren't going on the trip. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that wasn't a really big a sleuth uh, situation. Who could they, it be? Hmm. Everyone's here except for these four kids, and yeah. there's four masked individuals bombing us with and these water balloons. four kids are always getting in trouble and weren't allowed on the field trip. Hmm. <laughs> we'll have to get back to you on that, sir. We need more evidence. Oh, yeah, man. We had one of the guys, uh, one of my buddies was up on top of the school, actually, and uh, three of us came out of the trees. Oh, you so had a, so you had the sniper on the roof? Yeah, right. Oy, oy, oy. DJ, you'll appreciate this one on text. I'll never forget the one kid who switched out the cream and the Oreos with toothpaste and handed them out to the kids oh, in my fifth grade no, class. No, that was my first witness April Fool's prank. Oh, see, and I love Oreos. I'd be so pissed. 
Yeah, because it probably take a few seconds and a few bites before you start really your brain starts recognizing what's in your mouth. Oh God! Because and then I'd be like, so these really aren't Oreos. You 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 wrecked me in so many ways. Well, two thirds of it's an Oreo. I said, yeah, but the boy, the most important part is the stuff. Well, this person in the third grade, we made paper bodies to show where the intestines were. One boy decided it would be funny to hump his. I'll never forget that. Oh uh-huh. boy. <laughs> Let's go to uh, Mrs. Jones in Snohomish. Mrs. Jones, you are on the rock. Good morning. Good morning, Mrs. Jones. How about you? Is it somebody you'll never forget, or were you that somebody? Uh, well, I've been teaching for 10 years, so I have lots of stories. Oh, I love um, this. But my, the first one that came to my mind was when I was actually substituting, and I had to like bend down to pick something up from behind the computer or whatever, and a student thought that it would be a really good idea, a second grader. To put a pencil down my butt crack. Oh, come on. Yes. Oh. And then the worst part was they did it eraser side first. So when I jumped up and freaked out, the pencil jabbed it and like stuck in my back. Oh, oh. damn. Yes. Yes. Oh, how old was it? Was it second, second grader? Grade. Second grade. Yes. So they're seven, eight ish. Yeah. Yes. Do, do you know what's been going on in that kid's world these days? Is he still on a, a life of butt crack assaults? <laughs> Probably. I don't know. I do not teach at that school anymore, but that was definitely one for the books, that's for sure. Yeah, and one for the butt. Wow. Oh, good one. Good yeah. one. Thank you, Mrs. Jones. You get a, oh, you a got gold a, star, BJ. I got a gold star from Mrs. Good Jones. Job. Thank you very much. I like her. She's a good teacher. I like that we have to refer to her as Mrs. Jones. Well, yeah, she is the teacher. I think any time a teacher calls in, that they always have to be called by their name. I know. It doesn't feel right to call them by their first right. name. I always have to call Mrs. Jones. Yeah. Like yeah. If I, if, granted, most of my elementary school teachers are probably not alive, but if Mrs. Dean was alive, even if she told me what her first name is, I would still call her Mrs. Dean. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, that, You're absolutely right. It's just that it's like... I, I don't, I don't want to know anything about you, but you're Mrs. Dean. Yep. That's it. All right. Um, we don't have a Mrs. Jones, but we do have a Mr. Peach. Mr. Okay. Peach. And he can give you some free financial advice. He, are, he is our KISW financial advisor. So if you want it, call in now. 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. Todd Peach from BECU taking your calls and texts at 747 on The Rock. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. He's here right now and has agreed to answer more of your your questions about bankruptcy. How much does bankruptcy cost? Usually with my office, we, we do a flat fee that includes all your court costs, filing fees, credit counseling, credit reports, and one cost in Chapter 13 cases. That usually starts at about $900 uh, with Chapter 7 cases. So total costs, including all your court costs, attorney fees, is usually about $1,500. We offer payment plans on Chapter 7, so you can start a file with my office for as little as $200. You can send your creditor calls to us. We'll take your creditor calls while you get gather up your information and, and pay, make payments on the rest of the fees. But Chapter 13 cases, uh, we can make payment arrangements in most cases as well and get your case filed even sooner in a Chapter 13 case because of the reorganization aspect to it. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at choosetherightchapter.com. That's choosetherightchapter.com. Thanks for listening.